Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Bostwick. I'm a professor of psychiatry at the Mayo Clinic, and I have almost unwittingly found myself to be an expert on medical marijuana. So that's what I'll be talking with you about today and giving you some ideas of the controversies that uh, exist with uh, this substance, which has been so much in the news as of late. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is it really is quite chaotic because we don't have a law of the land when it comes to marijuana. Uh, as far as the federal government is concerned, uh, this substance is a Schedule I substance, meaning that it has no medical benefit and therefore should not be used for any medical reason. At the same time, over the last few years, 23 states have gone and legalized mar marijuana to one extent or another. 21 of these states have made it legal for medical uh, use in some situations. Two others have made it legal both medically and recreationally. One of the challenges here is that none of these states have similar plans. The law varies from state to state. The implications for the patients, the users, and the providers vary from state to state. And in all cases, uh, from a federal point of view, uh, the substance is illegal. Where this is really important for us as physicians is that we are in fact licensed both locally and at the federal level. We have our state license to practice medicine, but we have our federal license to prescribe. And thus, if we as MDs or DOs prescribe um, in the state where we live, we're in fact violating the law. Now the history of how marijuana came to be a Schedule I substance is interesting as well. Uh, it's been used, uh, cannabis and cannabis-related uh, substances, uh, in medicine for millennia. Uh, we know that it was used as early as uh, uh, 2500 BC uh, uh, in, in India, and it's been used throughout the world uh, ever since. Perhaps the first modern reference is to India uh, in the 1830s where it was used for a range of indications that are in fact strikingly similar to the many claims that are made for it today. Uh, in, in fact, in the U.S. it was part of the black bag uh, that doctors carried um, from about the mid-19th century to the mid-20th century. It was a legal drug in many forms, including poultices, pills, smoked, uh, almost any way you can think of using it, and doctors used it along with many other um, herbal preparations in treating their patients. Uh, along about the middle of the 20th century, it was recognized that perhaps uh, this drug was dangerous. Uh, some associate it with it be, being used in certain minority populations. In any case, uh, by 1970, it was declared to have no medical value um, and essentially put out of circulation uh, officially. Now, in reality, uh, anyone who knows anything about uh, our history knows that uh, it became a recreational substance that exploded in the 60s and 70s, so that by and large a huge proportion of Americans have had some exposure, if not having actually used the drug recreationally. Uh, so we have this funny position where people are using it recreationally throughout the nation. Uh, it's being grown throughout the nation. It's an easy plant to grow, and yet it's illegal at the federal level and can end up putting uh, the user, or at least the dealer, into jail. Now, one of the things that fascinates me about this 1970 finding is that it was not based in science. Uh, the structure of THC was only discovered in 1964 by Dr. Mekulam in Israel, and almost nothing was known about how uh, the drug worked um, on, on the human organism, let alone specifically for human disease. In the past uh, four decades, the amount of research has burgeoned uh, we now know that there are two receptors that are medically uh, important. We know that there's a system called the endocannabinoid system that spreads throughout the body and uh, is a regulatory system. We know that potentially uh, pharmaceuticals could be developed that could be used for everything from treating cancer to treating psychiatric illness. Unfortunately, with the Schedule I designation, it's become almost impossible to do research on medical marijuana. The federal government controls that research, and uh, the standard of, in this country is for all of our pharmaceuticals to, be, uh, to go through the Federal Drug Administration in order to get approval to be used medically. That's been exceedingly difficult to do. 
there is a process, but it's encumbered by the involvement of many agencies because of that Schedule I designation. And as a result, we're really pretty much stagnant, if not at a standstill, with regard to developing uh, pharmaceuticals uh, based on the science we've learned about the endocannabinoid system and cannabis products. Now, we have, in a paradoxically, had at least two drugs on the formulary since the mid uh, 80s, Marinol and Sesamet, which are based on uh, tetrahydrocannabinol, uh, which is the active ingredient in marijuana. These are orally uh, taken pills. They're used for treating uh, cancer pain and for treating nausea. Um, but there are problems with uh, how they're taken up by the body that makes them not necessarily very effective for many, if not most, patients. Smoked marijuana has proven to be much more effective, but there are major issues with uh, taking a drug in, in the form of, of smoke. Uh, certainly the tobacco story uh, is an important uh, connection that might help to explain the marijuana story. There has been a substance called Sativex, actually a pharmaceutical, that is now legal in many countries in Europe and in Canada that's been uh, in stage three trials in the U.S. now for nearly a decade. Uh, this is um, a, vapor, uh, a, a vapor that you spray into the mouth uh, and it's absorbed the, through the lining of the mouth and it gives good relief with, with, without giving um, a high in most cases. For reasons that are not clear to me, uh, it is stuck in, in Schedule th 3 and thus is not available for our patients to use and for us to prescribe. Uh, I don't see um, an easy resolution to this problem. Uh, with the states uh, running rampage, essentially, uh, challenging federalism, uh, and with the federal government not changing its stance, there is no resolution uh, forthcoming to the issues that will challenge us as physicians. Uh, while we may recommend uh, medical marijuana carefully, uh, we cannot prescribe it. And uh, while we, uh, as long as there is no uh, ability to do significant research on this drug, the kinds of pharmaceuticals that uh, the cannabinoid system promises will not be developed. Um, overall, uh, as I said at the beginning of my remarks, the situation is really quite chaotic and actually, frankly, fairly idiotic. I'm Dr. Michael Bostrick with the Mayo Department of Psychiatry. Thank you for listening.